All right, engineers, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue, but before we do that, I want you guys to click in the right corner, right, and click on, if you guys haven't seen it already, part one and part two of alcohol, ethers, and epoxides, so that you guys can catch up with us, because right now we're gonna go into epoxide formation. All right, so let's go ahead and do this, guys. So epoxide formation, so first off, what is an epoxide? Well, it's just like a, it kind of looks a little bit like this. So you're gonna have this guy here, this guy here. So it's kind of like a cyclic oxygen, right? So you're gonna have this oxygen in a cyclic form within the chain. So how do we form these guys? Well, first off, what we're gonna do is, in order for us to make an epoxide, and sometimes they even call them oxyranes, we're gonna take this epoxy, we're gonna take an alkene first. So let's say we take an alkene, and I like, I like the uh, cyclohexane but we're gonna do cyclohexene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take cyclohexene and I'm gonna react cyclohexene with what's called a peroxy acid. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna draw just a generic peroxy acid here. Let's say I have CH3, uh, C, double bond oxygen, um, O, O, H. Okay, so there's our peroxy acid right there. What happens in this reaction? Well. What happens is these pi electrons here, right? These pi electrons here are gonna come and attack specifically, I'm sorry, not this hydrogen, it's gonna come and attack that oxygen. So these pi electrons come and attack that oxygen right there. At the same time, these lone pair of electrons in the oxygen come in and attack that carbon. Then after that happens, these, uh, Pi electrons here on the oxygen, these pi electrons on the oxygen, they come up to high energy levels. Whenever they do, they ha what happens is they come over and attack that hydrogen over there. So that's when I, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna come over and attack that hydrogen. Then when it attacks the hydrogen, that bond is actually going to break off onto the oxygen. Then when it breaks off onto the oxygen, then what else happens? When these pi electrons come up to high energy levels, right, and then they go and attack the hydrogen, what happens is this bond right here breaks. This bond here breaks. And that pops on right there. And then what's the result of this? What is this gonna look like? So again, let's kind of follow the arrows here. Pi electrons attack that oxygen. When the pi electrons attack that oxygen, the lone pair of electrons in the oxygen will attack that carbon. Then the pi electrons within this carbonyl compound will come to high energy levels and then those electrons will come out and attack this faraway hydrogen. The bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen breaks off and forms on the oxygen, and then the bond between these two oxygens break, and then those electrons go and form a pi bond right there. So look what it's gonna look like afterwards. A lot of arrow movements in there, sorry about that. That's just one of the sucky things about these mechanisms sometimes. So again, what do we have here? We have oxygen right there, right? With a lone pair of electrons that we formed. Then what else? We have the methyl group here. Then we have this oxygen. Well, it formed a single bond, right? So we formed a single bond to the oxygen because we put those pi electrons up to the top, right? But then what do we do? We snag the hydrogen. And then this bond right here between that oxygen and this other oxygen over here broke, right? And what happened? Those electrons came over here and formed a double bond. So then we formed a carboxylic acid. So what do we do? We took an alkene, we reacted with what's called, what is this thing called here again? It's called a peroxy acid. And when we react the peroxy acid with the alkene, what do we get? We get an epoxide. And then what else do we get? We get a carboxylic acid. Okay? So not too bad here, nothing too crazy here. Just know that whenever you're reacting this alkene here with a peroxy acid, it produces a epoxide. So now we formed an epoxide. Well, what else can we do? So what did we do here? We did the epoxide formation. Well, now let's go ahead and take this epoxide here and let's go ahead and run some epoxide reactions here. So let's go ahead and take this epoxide. We'll take a couple different structures of epoxide. Let's say we take this epoxide, we make it a little bit different. Let's say now I put a methyl on one of those carbons. Let's say I just put it right there. Okay. Now I can do three reactions from this point. So let's go ahead and do three reactions. Let's say we come down here and go this way. Let's say we come up here and go this way, or we come smack dab right in the middle. So let's go ahead and follow this first step. 
So first step, let's go ahead and react this molecule here with hydronium. So we're going to react this molecule here with hydronium, or some acid, right? But specifically, prefer it to be hydronium. Then what happens? These lone pair of electrons in the oxygen come off and snag one of those hydrogens. So he's acting as the nucleophile. This guy's acting as the electrophile. Then what happens? That bond between the hydrogen breaks off, and what do you get? You form water out of this, right? So one of the things that are going to be a byproduct of this right there, this first step here, is water. And then what happened to that epoxide? Well, now we just formed a oxygen with a positive charge right there, right? So we protonated that oxygen. Oh, keep our methyl there. Then what happens? This water, he's a weak nucleophile. So he's not a strong nucleophile, he's a weak nucleophile. So if he had to attack, he could attack this carbon or this carbon. But that's a lot of steric hindrance, and strong nucleophiles don't prefer that. So what he's going to want to do here is, he's going to want to attack this side. So this water comes in and attacks that carbon right there. When it attacks that carbon, this bond breaks off and forms onto the oxygen. And then look what we get out of this. So again, that was the first step, this is the second step. What do we get out of this? The result is an OH2, right, so plus charge, so that's our oxonium ion right there. And then what happened? This bond broke off onto the oxygen, what do you get? OH, and now you have two lone pairs of electrons, and then our methyl group right there. Then what happens? Okay, well some other water would be formed. And if this is acid catalyzed, hydronium is acting as our catalyst. We're going to want to regenerate him. So water that was formed as some byproducts of his reaction, is going to come back and regain his hydrogen and regenerate himself. And so then what do we get out of this? Our final product within the third step of this mechanism is a diol. <clears throat> We're going to get a diol. So look at that. So what's the result of this reaction? A diol. So what do we do? We took an epoxide and we did this acid catalyzed uh, reaction of him, a hydration basically, where we're trying to convert that into a alcohol there. All right, so that's the first one of the reactions. Let's do another one. Let's do this one, but let's do it with a binary acid again, and let's do this with uh, hydrochloric acid. So now let's do this with HCl. Should, we could use any one of the halogens, but I'm just going to use HCl. So if I do this with HCl, let's go ahead and zoom in on that guy right there then. So if we zoom in on that epoxide, what's going to happen? The same concept that we had before, right? Where those lone pair of electrons on that oxygen is going to come over and it's going to rip off that hydrogen on the, of, attached to the chlorine. So boom, boom. Same first step. What's the second step? Okay, well let's actually see what happens over here, the result of this. Then we get this guy here. And then what do we have? Same oxygen with a hydrogen, so it's protonated with a positive charge. And then we have a chloride ion out here. Okay, this is really, really important. Okay, it's a funky one. Oop, keep my methyl there. This chlorine, he prefers to attack carbons that are most tertiary. But you would think, usually when you think about it, it always goes in order, tertiary, secondary, primary. Not this case. It's really weird where this chlorine loves to attack tertiary, but then it would rather attack primary as compared to secondary. So if this chlorine had a choice of which carbon he'd want to attack, he would prefer to attack A, tertiary carbon over a primary and then a primary over a secondary. So if you look here, what do we have here? If I look at that carbon and I pretend I had a carbocation right there, so I pretend I have a carbocation right here. That carbon right there is bound to one, two, three carbons. Then if I block over here, what do I have? This one's only bound to one, two carbons. That's a secondary carbocation. Well, we already said it prefers tertiary way over secondary. So where's that chlorine going to attack? It's going to attack that carbon. So it's going to come in, attack that carbon right there, and this bond is going to break off onto the oxygen. Well, then what do you get out of this? Okay, that was our, this will be our second step. We're going to get our alcohol popping up over here. And then we're going to get our halide ion, which is going to be poking right over here. And that is that reaction. So again, what do we do? First step, first one of these things, we did this acid-catalyzed reaction where we formed a 1,2-diol. 
Then in the second one that we did, the second reaction of epoxide, we reacted with a binary acid where we put a halide on the second carbon, kept our alcohol. Now we're gonna do this next reaction, but we're gonna do it in a base catalyzed reaction. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up. Let's do base catalyze. So if I run this, I could run this in any base, but I'm gonna run it within um, methoxide just because it's an easy one. So I'm gonna run this in methoxide, so CH3O with a negative charge. So this is a base. I'm gonna run this in its conjugate acid also. So I'm gonna take CH3O negative, but I'm gonna run it in its conjugate acid, which is methanol. So I have methoxide, which is the one with the negative charge, and then I have methanol, which is this OH right here. So then what happens? Well, let's come in and zoom in on this epoxide again. What happens? First thing it's gonna do is, that methoxide there, he's a very, very strong nucleophile. Very, very strong nucleophile. So he's gonna come in and he's going to attack, so again, when he attacks, he's a very strong nucleophile. But what he's gonna attack is he's gonna attack the easier side. He's gonna come and attack this side right there. He doesn't like to have a lot of steric hindrance right there. He doesn't want there to be a lot of electron repulsion. So he's gonna come in and attack that carbon, the secondary carbon. So he comes in, attacks that secondary carbon. This bond plops up onto the oxygen just like we've done before. And then what do we get? Then we have cyclohexane there. We have a oxygen right there with a lone pair of electrons with a negative charge because it didn't have any hydrogen there. There's no protonation step there. Then what do we have? We have a OCH3. Then what happens here? Then we take this guy and we react him with the conjugate acid that we had before. So now we're going to react him with the conjugate acid. So if you remember, the conjugate acid is going to be methanol. So he's going to come and he's going to regenerate our base catalyst because we always want to regenerate our catalyst. So he's going to come over here, grab that hydrogen right there, and that bond's going to flip onto the oxygen. And then, so this was the first step, second step, and this will be our, th we're going into our third step now. Third and final. So what will happen? He'll get protonated. And then what do we get out of this? Our alcohol is going to be popping out over here. And I'm sorry, I missed my methyl right there. Methyl, methyl should still be there. So we're going to have our methyl there and then our OH. And then over here, we're going to have our ether. So now, what do we just do? We took an epoxide and we had three different options that we could do with this. We could run it in a hydronium acid catalyst to produce a 1,2 diol. We could run it with a binary acid to produce an alcohol and an adjacent halide on the second carbon. And we could run it in a base catalyzed reaction with a base and its conjugate acid. And then we would produce a ether and an adjacent alcohol. That is our epoxide reactions in a nutshell. Okay, so we, what do we do? We formed an epoxide through starting with an alkene using a peroxy acid. And then we took that epoxide through three series of reactions. Hydronium reaction, binary reaction, binary acid reaction, and a base catalyzed reaction. All right, so what have we done so far? We've done acid and base catalyzed reactions, and we've done epoxide formations. So what we've done so far, guys, is we've covered all of the ether and epoxides and alcohol reactions that we're gonna need to know for right now. There is many, many more that we could have done. But what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna do a whole bunch of practice problems. All right, so we'll catch you guys in the next video.